David Brewster here with a new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Wishbone Ash, and I've had some requests to feature some of Wishbone Ash's music, and these guys are legendary. Uh, they formed in England in 1969, and their first trio, like three or four albums, just erupted in popularity and influence, and they definitely gained a big cult following of musicians and guitarists. Very influential band. And they definitely helped popularize harmony guitar parts, you know, dual guitar harmony right alongside the Allman Brothers, you know, and you have to remember, like, the Beatles and your bird could sing had harmony guitar parts. The Yardbirds, when Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page worked together for a brief moment, they kind of had some harmony experiments, but it wasn't until the Allman Brothers and Wishbone Ash, they definitely developed this harmonized guitar part. So if you're not really familiar with this group, definitely the legendary Andy Powell has been the consistent member. And uh, my favorite era is that early 70s, you know, Andy Powell and Ted Turner. But not the cable news network Ted Turner, the rock and roll Ted Turner. Great band, and the way they worked together was really interesting and unique. So if you're curious about this group and like to learn more, this episode's totally for you. So here we go. So the music in this episode came from two Wishbone Ash albums, and they've released 24 studio albums in their career, also 12 live albums, and they're still active to this day. You know, Andy Powell is the only remaining member. He's been in the band the entire time. And then Ted Turner definitely was on the early, like, three or four albums. He left the group, and he came back, like, in the late 80s and remained until about the mid-90s. But they've had numerous, you know, lineup changes, bass players, drummers, guitarists, and stuff over the years. But, uh... There's some really interesting music, you know, in this episode, some really interesting chord play for sure, because it seems like, I don't know if it was, you know, Andy or Ted, but they definitely liked working with chords, you know, right alongside the harmony guitar stuff. So we're going to hit both of those things in this episode. And here we go. The opening, that's the song Blind Eye from the self-titled album, and right off the bat, there's a harmonized guitar moment, and then it kind of moves over into that rolling kind of boogie blues, and then back to harmony guitar. So let's break down the harmony part. So there's one guitar, and this is basically Wishbone Ash's kind of fretboard strategy for harmonized guitar parts. The Allman Brothers did this too, and keep in mind, the Allman Brothers were in America, Wishbone Ash was over in England, and they didn't know each other, you know, at least not initially. So it's interesting they both were tapping into this harmonized approach. But Guitar One's doing this. And I've seen this written like an open position with open strings, but I'm hearing vibrato on that second to last note D, and also that E note is slid off at the end. And you couldn't really do that down here. So that put me, you know, placing this right here. Right there. And then... And there's that vibrato to that slid E, like that. So that's basically an E7 right there. Right there. And then you hear a harmonized guitar. It's basically up an octave right here. And then... So it's just playing right along with that first guitar part. Here's guitar one. And guitar two, right here. One more time there. And then bend that B to C sharp. And then when you harmonize that together, I'm using the MXR clone looper, and it's, it's looping a guitar one, and I'm playing guitar two, like this. And you can hear how those harmony parts come together. It's just played in octaves, but you're still hearing that harmonized kind of effect. Really cool. 
After that runs through a couple times, you've got this boogie blues in A. And he's basically doing uh, this roll, you know, C to C sharp and grabbing the A octave right there. Then do that roll C to C sharp and then grab E. So you're alternating that last note like this. <laughs> kind of movement at the end and then move to E and do the exact same thing G to G sharp and then alternate between E and B right there and then back to A and the five chord this B and that B5 and B6 right there and then you're right back in that harmonized guitar part again but check out Blind Eye, that's a killer song. Next up is Lady Whiskey, this is also from the first album, and yet another harmonized guitar part. And this opens in E, and then everything shifts over to A, and we're going to break down both those sections, but it's something like this. <laughs> really cool this gritty weird kind of harmony but I like it so the one guitar the first guitar is doing this right, that D to C sharp kind of movement and that hammer on you know the open A to B and then B to C sharp clone looper was looping and then the second guitar is creeping up here and you put those together and you got that interesting you know harmonized rub Whenever you move that over uh, to A, you're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to loop this. So there's the A part right there. It's the exact same thing we did with E. Like that, just move over to A and do it right here. The second guitar part does the exact same thing instead of this. Just move everything over and do it right here. And then when you harmonize those together, it sounds really cool. So you got this and this, you know, playing together like this. Check out Lady Whiskey if you want some more of that harmonized guitar action. It's really cool. Next up is the song Warrior. This came from the album Argus, and Argus is definitely my favorite Wishbone Ash album. There's a lot of respect and this kind of critical acclaim surrounding that album. And I don't really know what to consider it. I mean, it definitely is this blues rock, you know, kind of opus. But there's like medieval and fantasy themes, like in the lyrics and some of the songs. So it kind of gives it this really different feel and sound, of course. But uh, I love the first album, but uh, Argus is awesome. But Warrior is something like this. Something like that. So we're doing this really interesting, there's like a bend in the chord for that A minor. It's like they're vibratoing the chord in open position. So I'm just kind of moving the, the bottom two fretted notes, and then you're also doing a sus two right there. So that's really interesting to hear that first chord moving like that. And it's not a vibrato effect, it's physical, you know, on the guitar like that. And then E minor right there and lift up. And then it's G right there. And then it's uh, D to D sus four. And then this is also really interesting. So this first shape, it's really unusual. So 
that's going to function as a D sus2 like that. So you're doing the open D fretted A right there on the G string and then uh, double bar right there with your pinky on that E and A. And you're going to do that and then move back here to that third fret double bar and there you're grabbing a D and a G so it suddenly becomes a D sus4. So you're doing D sus2 and D sus4 but instead of like this, you're doing it like that. Kind of different. So that A minor, and those sus chords. song so check that out next up's the king will come this is also from the album argus and this is interesting on the album version it actually sounds a half step higher than where i'm going to demonstrate it here but on live albums and also live concert footage they just play it in standard so i'm not sure really what's going on here so if you do want to play it with the album uh, you're going to have to slap a capo on the first fret and then move all these chords up a half step or you can just find a live version and just play along with that but uh, something like this, it's really interesting. So it's a really interesting guitar part. It fades in too, but you can hear it's like this palm muted kind of scratch and sniff rhythm part. But it's D minor, and then it's going to F6, just an, add an F right there. Uh, and then it's E minor 7, like this. And you're going to move this fretted part over, and then it's an E7 flat 5 right there implied. So it's an interesting, you know, chord progression. D minor, F6. E minor 7, E7 flat 5, and then you're doing that weird kind of palm mute, you know. And it's all up on your pick hand to kind of mute that properly, because I was kind of messing it up there for a second. You just kind of want like a taste of those chords, it's hard. You know, something like that, so play around with that, it's a cool riff. Next up is Throw Down the Sword, also from the album Argus, and I switched to my Strat because I can distinctly hear vibrato on some of these chords that are ringing, and I realized I was playing a Les Paul wearing a Fender hat and wearing a Gibson shirt, now I'm playing a Strat wearing a Fender hat and still wearing that Gibson shirt. So my channel's not really fashion focused, sorry for the faux pas, but throw down the swords like this. <laughs> hear movement you know in those chords and I just couldn't really get it to sound like that with my last fall that's leading me to think that maybe somebody was using the strat with a bar could have been an SG maybe with a bar but uh, it's a minor for that first chord and just kind of lightly wiggle your bar and then C major and do the same thing G major the D major F major bar chord the C major this little move. So right there you're going to strum part of this G sus4 right there. You know, hold G and D and you're also grabbing that C right there on the 5th fret on the G string. Strum that and then you're picking through it backwards and then change that C to a B and then magically that uh, G sus4 changes to G major and pick backward through that. That's a really 
cool song. Next up's the song Blowin' Free from the album Argus, and I told you that Wishbone Ash liked to play with chords, and this song is the epitome of chord play. They're playing with chords all over the place on this one. Something like this. <laughs> second half kind of reminds me of Van Halen, big time. But for that first part, we're basically just moving, you know, this triad down. Right? Like a like partial G to partial F to partial D right there. And then we're doing this like, you know, G5, G sus4, G major action with that open D. So it's all like G over D, but like this. Right? So you're grabbing G major, open D, uh, G5 open D and then G sus4 open D like that. And then back to that G over D. And then move down a whole step, so do the same thing in F. You know, F, uh, F5, F sus4 to F over D. So it's, you know, F over D. Right? And then the same thing in D. Do D, D5, D sus4 to D. something to you know give your pinky kind of a workout you know that's chord based you know play around with that because it's all on your pinky there to stretch up and that's the you know note that's moving is what the pinky's grabbing on that and then you've got this chord, you're going to pick the open D, then the open G hammer onto that A on the G string, pick that D note on the B, and then play the high E open, and then hammer on that F sharp on the high E. So it's really interesting. We've got this rolling, kind of arpeggiated pattern, and then right back to the... Van Halen kind of riff, and keep in mind this is years before Van Halen, but like this. And it just has that Van Halen kind of bounce, and I know Eddie liked Wishbone Ash, he was definitely a fan and influenced by him. So who knows, maybe this influenced you know, some of Eddie's rhythm work, but like that. So you're basically doing like this D, and then it's like a little part of A over D. C over D, right? And then it's like a G5 over D to F5 over G, over, over D rather. So it's all off that D chord. And that's like a little C, like a part of C over D, and then you're ending with that G5 over D. So it's interesting because it's all partial implied chords here. Last but not least is Sometime World, and this is also from Argus, and this has this dreamy, Hendrixy kind of soul R&B kind of thing happening. Really cool, but it starts like this. <laughs> really interesting the way they kind of worked their chords. So it's A major for that opening chord right there. Let that ring. And then B minor uh, bar chord right there. And you're going to kind of pick through it like that. And then it's an E minor bar chord right next door right there. So you're doing an E 
minor bar chord, reach up here, grab that C sharp, and it turns into a E minor six, and then back to E minor. And A major where we started. Kind of pick through a little bit and then there's B minor again and a real tasty chord fill. So that's cool. Strum that B minor and then you're going to hammer on that E to F sharp. You're barring that A note which is the flat 7 so it's like a B minor 7. And then you're going to pull off this E to D on the G string like that. Um, the way that pull off and you're going to grab that B note and then the uh, the barred note on the B and then the G string. So there's a lot happening even though it's just a little chord fill like that. It's really interesting the way it sits in the mix too like that. Simple but very effective. Like that. So it's like a melodic chord fill. So cool. That's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the Chords of Wishbone Ash. And I want to thank the viewers out there for recommending and suggesting, you know, and requesting this band because I noticed the requests kind of, you know, adding up. And I'm definitely familiar with Wishbone Ash. I remember, you know, reading or hearing, you know, Van Hamlin mention them and Paul Gilbert and some different players. And, you know, I'd heard bits and pieces, but I definitely dove deeper into their music, you know, in preparation for this episode than I ever have. And now I'm actually a big fan, where it's like, whoa, I didn't realize they had so much cool music. I really dig that early 70s stuff, and I definitely need to spend some time learning and listening to some of their more recent music. But they're definitely, you know, commonly overlooked. They have a huge cult following in England, but then most people in the States, they don't even know, like, the band, or they barely know their music. So dive into some Wishbone Ash, for sure, especially the harmony guitar stuff. The guitar work is great. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments, play subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.